Bangs. <laughs>
The Gungans of Naboo, a planet in the Mid-Rim, are bipedal amphibians who live primarily in cities beneath Naboo's great bodies of water. They are tall and thin, with long, expressive ears, a bill-like mouth, and webbed fingers and toes. Their skeletal frame is made of cartilage, making them more flexible for underwater movement. When swimming, their nostrils seal, nictating membranes covering their eyes, and their eye stalks partially retract into their skulls, making underwater travel very easy for them. They also have tough skin on and around their heads, enabling them to burrow through sand and gravel with little difficulty. Compound lungs permit Gungans to breathe both air and water, and powerful legs allow them to swim very quickly. A significant number of Gungans have halyu, two long earlobes that reveal emotional states such as friendship, aggression, and fear. This species is omnivorous, although they have large teeth for cracking open shellfish, a staple of their diet. They also consume creatures known as gumbles from the trees surrounding their homes and mollusks from nearby marshes and lakes. In fact, Gungan culture centers on their environment and the other living things that populate it. They are particularly linked to the creatures known as kadu, which are used as battle mounts for their grand army. Similar to Tuscan raiders and their banthas, Gungans believe that the Kadu are joined with them in a way that no other creatures are. They will treat them as family and mourn them in a similar fashion when they are lost. The Gungan people domesticated the Kadu thousands of years ago, and when Gungans migrated to their underwater cities, they brought the Kadu with them. They are the mainstay of the Gungan militias, or militia Gung, and Entire schools are devoted to teaching Gungans to ride and live in harmony with these creatures since it is considered essential for growth. In battle, the Gungans who ride Kadu wield the heaviest authority and records show that they are the most effective leaders. Kadu are given to Gungan officers with great ceremony and officers never abandon their steeds unless they die or they are retired due to age. In a like manner, Kadu will never desert their owners, feeling a profound love and loyalty. Gungan society and government have been built upon treaties made by the main Gungan society and government have been built upon treaties made by the many different settlements and clans. Gungan life is governed by the rules and decisions set down by the high council, which is led by an elected boss. While the members of the clans exhibit different outward biological features, they remain the same in terms of their inner physiology. The two primary tribal races within Gungan society are the Atola, which are the most numerous, and the Ankura, a race that does not have long ears, eye stalks, or bills. Scientists believe that while these two different races share common ancestry, the Ankura have lived on land longer than the Atola, and have therefore evolved to look more like a land-based form. The basic Gungan family unit consists of two parents and children. Children hatch in water cradles in tadpole form, although they develop arms and legs within a month of birth. Nearly 100 standard years before the Battle of Yavin, the Gungans fought off unknown invaders on their world, assembling the first grand army by uniting all Gungan cities and communities. After throwing off the invaders, Gungans maintained the army as a means of defending against any foe, including their world's ever-present sea monsters. Made up of the combined might of the militia Gung, the Grand Army wears leather and metal headgear and marginal and marginal body armor with small circular shields. The main weapons used are plasmic energy balls. Gungan generals and officers transmit their orders via horns, wild gestures, and piercing whistles. Still, Naboo is normally a fairly peaceful world, thus the army is more of a matter of tradition than need. Gungans are not very tolerant of those who threaten the peace of their home, and their sentencing for criminals is often severe. Minor crimes, such as vandalism, are given a sentence of exile or caning, even stoning. Once Gungans had been cast out, it may be difficult for them to return to society, and even if they do, they may find that massive peer pressure will make life quite uncomfortable until their past offenses have faded from memory. Despite this harsh code of law, Gungans are generally a happy and gregarious people who love company and the sharing of stories. Around one another, they speak their native language of Gunganese, but with outsiders, they will combine their language with basic to form a pidgin language that is usually understandable to speakers of basic. 
They do welcome visitors with kindness, but are typically suspicious and quiet until the outsider earns the respect. The Gungans are a simple but proud people who bristle at any attempt to conquer them. They are technologically advanced, although they prefer to live simply, with as little interference from machinery as possible. They use deflector shield technology to maintain bubble domes over their underwater cities and utilize biotechnology, growing rather than building their underwater ships force fields and weapons they take great care to preserve their environment and use natural resources sparingly other than advances in biotechnology gungans live pretty much as they did thousands of years ago they dwell in relative peace alongside the human inhabitants of naboo although relations between the species have not always been at the best of terms due to cultural differences gungans are suspicious of their naboo neighbors probably because the average Gungan has never met a human personally. However, historical records contain no references to armed conflict between the Gungans and humans, so it is believed that the estrangement stemmed from an, an inability to communicate rather than hostilities between the two groups. Prior to the fall of the Old Republic, Gungans had started designing space vessels, but they ceased all such development when the Empire threatened their home. It is believed that the Gungans retreated deeper into the swamps following the rise of the Empire, once again isolating themselves from the human population of Naboo. During the Old Republic era, they were represented in the Galactic Senate by Padme Amidala, following her successful peace negotiations between the Gungans and the human peoples while Queen of Naboo. Since then, however, traffic to and from the Naboo system has grown more rare, although the sector was represented in the New Republic Senate by first a human and then a Gungan senator. And then a notable appearance is obviously in The Phantom Menace, and obviously Jar Jar Binks is the most famous Gungan. Well, that is a bit about Gungans in their home world of Naboo. Let me know what you thought of the Gungans in the comment section down below, and did you learn anything about the Gungans? Well, again, you can also in the comments vote for Wookiees or Huts as the next episode and final episode of Season 1 of Star Wars Alien Species. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and until next time, thanks for watching.